What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be fixing the check engine light that's on the Focus right now. So I'll show you what it is. So as you can see right here, I have the P0420. Now this check engine light has something to do with the O2 sensor and it's due to me running a catless downpipe on my car along with, I didn't have the problem at first until I did the big turbo upgrade. Then I've had, then this issue has arisen. Um, so I've reached out to people, other people have like commented on some videos and I have to get a defouler. So here's the defouler from Woosh, the same as the downpipe I have, that's the catless one. Um, but I realize I don't have the parts technically to complete this, so we gotta go pick them up because, let me show you. So the parts I'm missing, once I get this installed into the downpipe, the new, the not new, but the current O2 sensor will go in here, which will have this crush washer right like that. Perfect, got that this side all checked out and good to go. Now it's this side connecting to the downpipe. I do not have a big enough um, wrench for this nut right here. This will be, once I get it on, this will be tightening to the downpipe side so that way it doesn't move or wiggle or anything like that. I don't have one for this, so I gotta pick that up along with, um, these are the different size airflow uh, that'll allow airflow to pass through. Most people use this medium size and that actually goes right in like that. Small, medium, and then a large amount of airflow. This guy right here, you have to pinch, close, and I can't do that with my fingers because it hurts, and then it sits on the inside right there, so that way when you install it, it doesn't yoink itself out your exhaust, you know, so it won't be gone. I need needle nose pliers now and a wrench that'll be able to tighten this down. Once you get the car lifted up, you're gonna have to find your O2 sensor where this location, let me get a light. I've already disconnected it, but you can see right on the other side of that hose right here. Now that I got that, we can go underneath and try and remove the O2 sensor. I'm gonna try and remove just the O2 sensor. If I have to, then I'll remove the whole downpipe, but I'm gonna try and avoid that. We'll see. If you're planning on doing a big turbo or tuning your car, just go ahead and get the defouler and then do that while you're doing the whole install, especially if you decide to do a catless downpipe because it'll save you a whole lot of time. But here we are making a video out of it, so it is what it is. All right guys, so as you can see, right, right there, that little nipple area, that's where the O2 sensor was. I have successfully retrieved it and got it out. I did have to take out the charge pipe right here that goes to the hot side of the air intake and there is, there's the turbo. But anyway, usually, or typically, you will have a um, catalytic converter right here and this is a catalyst downpipe so I do not have mine and tuners are not allowed to tune this uh, O2 sensor out of their tune anymore because of the EPA. So we have to kind of trick it with that defouler. All right, so here you guys can see I have that medium sized uh, inlet tube with that little ring thing in there holding it together. See, and shake it down, nothing comes out. So it's time to put this on and then tighten it up. Hopefully it goes all the way and I just tighten it, but we'll see, I might tighten it with this and uh, call it a day. And then we'll attach the crush washer with the O2 sensor on to this. All right, as you guys can see, I have it, the angled defouler on there and it's perfectly uh, facing towards the front of the vehicle. That way, when I fish the wire for the O2 sensor, it will go straight up um, to the back to the connection. So now the hard part, I feel like that was kind of challenging. Like I said, if you can get the defouler and your downpipe all in one, set it up and do it then, I would recommend that. This kind of, I mean, it's not terrible, 
by all means, this is probably one of the easier installs I've done. Now, let's try and get this O2 sensor wired up and out of the way so the, the wire doesn't melt from the downpipe and the external wastegate. That's that other tube right there. Here's a little pro tip. Use leftover wire or string. I, I'd prefer wire, that way you can uh, fish it from the bottom up like I did. And I just use this extra wire. And now I'm gonna connect the O2 sensor to the defaller. And once that gets done and tightened up, I'll use this wire to connect to the connection port of the O2 sensor. That way it'll fish up through, away from any heat source. That way the wiring or coating does not melt through or allow the O2 sensor to go bad. And then I have the connection for it right here. As you can see, I have this O2 sensor here connected to that wire. And as I mentioned, I'll just pull it from the top and it will slide up past uh, those other tubes through uh, right next to the firewall. All right, let's see how well I did this. Ooh. Well, just like that, you can see connection right there. As you can see, the connection is right there, so I'm not gonna let that go. I'm gonna probably try and tie it up right here. So before I remove this wire, I just wanna make sure I have it connected properly, which I just connected it. I heard the click, but I didn't record that for you guys. So that way I can disconnect this wire and the O2 sensor will not fall back down. All right, all there is to do now is just, let's see, clear the codes. Now all there is to do is just put some miles on the car and I'll see you guys tomorrow after making some errands, running around, and we'll see if it, if it goes off. Cause usually around 12 minutes of driving, maybe even 15 minutes of driving, then the code comes back on. So if it doesn't come on after 15 or 20 minutes of driving, the defaller work, baby. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so just got done working out at the gym. It's like a 15 minute drive to the gym and I'm already like halfway heading back home. And as we can see, there is no check engine light now. So I believe the defowler actually has worked or is working. So that's a plus. Now we was that a big deal to fix? Some may say yes, some may say no. Me personally, I just don't like seeing an engine light because I feel like something else could be wrong that's hidden behind that P0420 code. Um, and I'd rather have that gone, that issue like pushed away, pushed to the side. Um, that way if another more important issue would arise, it'll show up versus the check engine light already being on and basically disguising that new issue. So, sorry it's a little Drony, but it's what it is with a literally a basically a straight piped exhaust besides a resonator. That's what I have. Um, sounds this turbo is amazing. So if you guys are in the market for it, definitely purchase it. Save up for it and purchase it. Don't just go into debt for it. Um, but yeah. If you guys did like this video and hopefully it helped you understand or fix your problem that you're having with your car, uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned.